iOS 15.8.1 and iOS 16.7.5 released the other day, along with iOS 17.3. Apple continues to update older devices along with AirPods as well that have gained some new firmware updates for older versions. Many of you have been asking me to cover what's new, so I thought we'd go over that fairly quickly. Now, unfortunately, if you have a newer device, you won't be able to downgrade to either of these versions. For example, if you have an iPhone XS Max, iOS 16.7.5 is not available. Apple hasn't even made the IPSW or firmware file available in order to downgrade. You can only install these on specified devices. For example, iOS 15.8.1 is only available on the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, 7, 7 Plus, iPhone SE first generation, as well as iPad Air 2, iPad iPad mini 4th gen and iPod touch 7th gen. If you wanted to install iOS 16.7.5, it's only available on iPhone 8, 8 plus iPhone 10, iPad 5th gen, iPad pro 9.7 inch and iPad pro 12.9 inch first gen. Unfortunately, it's not available for any other devices. And you can see the overall size of these. When I took a screenshot from it, iOS 15.8.1 was about 164.7 megabytes. iOS 16.7.5 was 189.6. Depending on what version you're installing from, expect them to be about a couple hundred megabytes or so. Let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings and I've already got the screen up here. You'll see here under about. With iOS 15.8.1, the build number is 19H380. With iOS 16.7.5, the build number is 20H307. That just lets you know that you're on the current version. Now, as far as what's new, well, these are security updates. If we go back to the actual update page, when I took a screenshot of it, it says this update provides important bug fixes and security updates and is recommended for all users. That's on iOS 15.8.1. However, on iOS 16.7.5, they say this update provides important security fixes and is recommended for all users. So no mention of bug fixes here with 16.7.5. However, we do have security updates and bug fixes on 15.8.1. Apple has not said what those bug fixes are, so hopefully it's a little more stable. But if we take a look at Apple's security website, we can see what they've updated there. Now, I'll link this in the description below, but you can go to the main page and see all of the security updates for iOS 17.3 and others. But with iOS 15.8.1, they've just updated two things as far as security. They both have to do with WebKit, which is the underlying code of Safari, and the impact says processing web content may disclose sensitive information. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited against versions of iOS before iOS 16.7.1. Apple fixed this with an out of bounds read was addressed with improved input validation. So that's how you read those. And then here's just the CVE number with the person that helped Apple find this. Again, we have another one where some of the content could have been shared and shouldn't have been or found at least. Now, if we go out of this, we can go to iOS 16.7.5 and there's actually some more security updates here. If we scroll down, you'll see there's some for accessibility, Apple neural engine, image IO, Safari, then WebKit, the code under Safari, and a few different ones. So we have additional updates here with iOS 16.7.5. So this pertains to iPad as well. And that's really all that's in these updates. And if you're wondering if you should install them, well, I definitely would for the security. We'll talk about performance and benchmarks in just a moment. But as far as the AirPods update, there's a few things to talk about here in that they finally updated a couple different AirPods. AirPods second generation and AirPods Pro first generation have both been updated. So if you have old Older versions of AirPods, they've finally updated these and they've brought it to version 6A321. So if we go on the iPhone 8 Plus here, you'll see it's not connected. I'll connect quickly to this one. Now that they're connected, let's go in and take a look. And if we scroll down, they haven't been updated just yet. However, there's not a whole lot to talk about with this update as Apple doesn't really specify what they've fixed this time around. If we go back to Safari here, scroll down, you'll see that the latest versions of the firmware updates for AirPods are 6A321. Now, Apple released this same firmware update the other week, maybe a week or two ago for AirPods third generation. So it's just bringing them up to the same number. Maybe it has to do with compatibility with Apple Vision Pro so that they'll work with that or possibly something else. But either way, 
they've worked pretty well all along. Now it's just bringing them up with the latest updates. So we'll probably get another update soon for newer versions and hopefully they'll update them all at the same time to give them the same build and hopefully all the features. Now I would love to see Apple update this so that we have more specificity as far as the overall fixes as they only say bug fixes and other improvements. We don't know what that means because they haven't told us, but I would love for them to update bug fixes so we know what that means on not just AirPods, but also iOS telling us so we know that it's fixed and we can test it for them and let them know. Now, as far as overall performance, while I did test it across devices, it seems to be what you would expect, no different than what it was before the update. I played around with this just a little bit, but if we go into things like music here, so within music, everything is fairly fast. We don't have ProMotion on these devices, so I wouldn't expect any difference there. If we go into weather, you'll see it takes a moment to load. They're on the same Wi-Fi network but the older version actually loaded faster this time, which is a little bit odd, but either way, things are nice and fast, just like they were before. And this is such a small update that it really shouldn't affect that whatsoever. As far as Geekbench scores, well, I ran it on all of these just to take a look. So we'll go into the latest version here. We'll go into Geekbench 6, and I even ran it on the iPhone 8 Plus. So let's take a look, even though the iPhone 10 and 8 Plus are very similar. Let's go into that, and we can see the scores here. So if we bring these down, You'll see the overall scores and this gives you an idea. So if you have an iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, you should have scores similar to these, maybe higher, maybe a little bit lower, but within a few hundred is pretty typical. So you'll see we have similar processors on the iPhone 10 and 8 Plus, and we have slightly varying results. That's completely normal, even though they're on the same version. So this just gives you an idea, 6S Plus, iPhone 10, and iPhone 8 Plus. Now, as far as battery, well, we don't really know what it's like as I haven't been using these full time, but as far as the overall features that have come to iOS 17 for different phones, such as the iPhone 15, don't expect Apple to add the charge cycles or any of the battery updates we've had with the latest versions, but I can show you the battery health and on the 6S plus it's at 85%. If we go in onto the battery health of the iPhone 10, we're at 88% and with the iPhone eight plus which I've used the 10 and eight plus extensively in the past. We'll go down, go to battery, battery health and charging. This one is at 93%. So that gives you an idea. They've been in storage at, at this point, since I don't use them mainly, I use the 15 pro max, but they've been doing pretty well overall, considering the age, especially the 6s plus that I used for an entire year. So let me know your battery capacity. Currently, if you've had your battery replaced, I'd love to hear from you. But like I said, battery life, I haven't used these full time, but they've just been on while I've been using this for the video and used very little battery with 44 minutes of screen active time. So or screen on time. So in general, it's probably the same. Apple really hasn't changed a whole lot here. This is more of just a security update and I would recommend it. If you found anything or noticed any bug fixes in older devices, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.